This morning's Gospel is from Luke 11, verses 1 to 13. Jesus teaching on prayer. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend. Yet, because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of Christ. God, hallowed be your name. Lord, let your will be done. We ask. Amen. Could I quickly put a plug in for the men's breakfast this Saturday? Men, it's good for men to meet together alone. This Saturday we are going to deal with life's five most important questions. Number one, should we put the mushrooms to the side or on top? Should the bacon be crispy? Should the eggs be sunny side up or down? Baked beans or spaghetti? And finally, the most important, should I go back for thirds? Stephen uh, Williams, as part of his work in this community, will be sharing with us men around things such as mental health for men. I've become aware that since being in ministry, my ability to be a good father has diminished somewhat. 
I put it down to the fact that you give so much to so many, you often go home with an empty tank. I'm grateful for a wife who is not just a good wife and a good mother, but lately also a good father. We have an older daughter at home, Tatiana, who is 22, and she also has kind of taken some of the role of her father, particularly with her sister, Grace. To prove a point that I'm not necessarily a good father, I'm going to talk about her right in the same room. Every time Anna returns home from work, the first thing you will see is Grace run to the window. She will not wait till Anna gets in the house or turn off her engine. She will yell out the window, Anna, what did you get me? <laughs> Anna often doesn't hear because she's normally on the phone on her way home and to which Grace will then move to the front door and stand there and repeat herself. Anna will eventually be aware that Grace has asked her question. She always asks, and she's come accustomed to ignoring her and moving to the kitchen. Anna, did you hear me? What did you bring me? That conversation develops and it eventually changes to Anna, could we go to the warehouse and buy me dot dot dot. Now we as good parents know not to give in to that but eventually you'll see the car leaving the driveway with Grace in it. She'll come back with the very thing she asked for, the very thing she pestered her sister for, her sister's used to this. She's aware that her sister is spoiled. She's aware that she shouldn't get what she keeps asking for. But eventually, she always gives in. In my lesser capacity as a father, I often have a brief conversation with her. Grace, if you're going to talk to your sister like that, at least wait till she gets inside. And if you're going to talk to her like that when she comes in the house, the first thing maybe you should say to her is, Anna, how was your day? Or if you really want to get into her, Anna, do you know that I love you? That's what today's gospel is about. We have a God who is saying to us, pester me, be persistent with me, because I'm a God who wants to hear from you. I have everything at my disposal but I don't want you to ask without being grateful. This template that I give you begins by saying the very thing we try to teach Grace. At least say to Anna that you love her first. What she doesn't yet understand is it's not the fact that she needs to get the words in the right order. It's the fact that God wants us to know or wants to hear that we love him first. That it's not about what we want, but it's about the importance of the relationship. You see, this today is about hope the first in a series of four in the next four weeks. This is about the hope in prayer. When we 
a persistent in prayer. God is aware that we're sometimes like a spoiled child, that we only see what we want. When Anna makes her sister wait, it's because she's trying to teach her patience. When her sister says to Grace, could you at least wait till I get inside? It's because God wants us to learn to be patient. God wants us to learn. Be persistent because I'm a God who wants to give. I want to be a God that you know can be found. And I want to be a God who will give. The more we are persistent in prayer, the more hope we have in a God. Does God know that you love him? Do you know God is a good father? Do you know that unlike me, he waits to hear the words, Father. Father, hallowed be your name. Father, your kingdom come first before mine. Father, your will be done. Please, God. But Father, would you also give me all that I need this day? Aware that, Father, you have forgiven me so, Father, help me to be forgiving. Save us from the trials that are before us. Hold us before you, God. Then you will have a God who, as always, hears you from the window. A God who is not preoccupied with a phone conversation. A God who is not angered and says, wait till I get in the door. But he's a God who says, when you say those words, Father, yes, son, yes, daughter, I hear you. Be persistent with your prayer because it's not about God hearing, it's about you doing. I want the best for you, my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter. I have everything at your disposal. I have direct access to the warehouse, to the library, to the bookshop, to the dairy, to the ice cream shop. I just want to know that first and foremost, that you love me because I love you.